on Prime Crime. A frightening call starts a haunting story. Or I had to just like to grab her and I just would lean forward and just press. The police interviews that are still hard to believe. My violence starts with lies start. And the pain behind it all. Were you sexually assaulted? Several times. How would you assault? In every way imaginable. Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we do a deeper dive into the most high profile and memorable true crime cases. Anytime we focus on a serial killer, we're talking about the worst of the worst. And this story is just that. 911, what is the address to your emergency? Street, Laundry, man. I've been 911 dispatchers receive all kinds of calls. But the one placed on September 13th, 2016 in Ashland, Ohio, is not one you hear every day. A woman says that she's been kidnapped, and it soon becomes clear why she's whispering. Where's she at now? Asleep. I'm in the bedroom with them. Is there any way you can get out of the building? I don't know without waking him, and I'm scared. Does he have a weapon? He's got a taser. Are you tied up now? Yeah, but I kind of freed myself. That was horrifying. Whatever reason, you know, she just didn't tie it tight enough. I think it's like a one in a million that she was able to not only get out of the rope, but have access to a phone and then be able to even make the phone call. If you think you can get out, you need to get out. Unless you were right here. Then something happens. A long silence follows for several minutes. Luckily, the caller gets back on the phone. Are you still there? I'm a stalker. Officers arrive on the scene. Wow, hurry up, hurry up. Where is he? They then arrest the suspect. But who was this attacker? Who abducted you? Sean Great. Sean Michael Great, a convicted felon who spent time behind bars and had been arrested multiple times for offenses ranging from domestic violence related crimes to burglary. What we know is that he has a history since he was a young child. He was described as just staring at people. He has been violent since a very young age, violence towards women, and this has just escalated over time. Later that day, Sean Great is brought into an interrogation room. A shirtless Great decides to speak with Ashland Police Captain David Lay. What you're about to hear is the start of something truly disturbing. Yeah, we ended up having sex. Against her will. Well, it ended up she didn't like it and she was really beating herself up about it. The sex part. Mm -hmm. so, it looks like you might have hit her a couple times. I did because I lost control. Great would explain to Lay that he befriended Jane Doe at a community center, brought her back to a place where he'd been squatting, and then kept her for days, all while assaulting her. Why did you lose control? Um, a lot of it's that she marry me, marry me, she won't marry me, you know, it's like, this is it. Mm -hmm. A lot of leading me on. Mm -hmm. She may not have wanted to have sex, like, afterwards. After what? After I hit her. The traits that I'm seeing are pretty indicative of antisocial personality disorder, which is having poor impulse control, wanting to be intimidating, lack of remorse, lack of empathy. But what we also see is some sexual sadism. She's saying you tied her down to a bed. I mean, what's the deal with all the straps on the mattresses? I did tie her down and abducted her. You abducted her? Yes. 
the person gains pleasure from the pain of others. So binding them, torturing them, keeping them hostage. She says you took some video of her when you forced her to give her give you oral sex from your cell phone. The combined antisocial personality disorder with sexual sadism is incredibly dangerous and also nearly impossible to treat. But the conversation with Lay takes a different turn. Now, patrol guys are saying you know Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Griffith was a 29-year-old schizophrenic who disappeared the month before. She's missing. That's what I heard. How'd you hear that? Uh, kind of makes me wonder if you didn't have something to do with her being missing. You know where she's at? Wish I could help. Coming up next, does Grade have the answers on Elizabeth's whereabouts? Um, I, I know. Maybe she's, okay. Maybe she's better off, though. Where did he take you from? Back in 2016, Sean Great is arrested in Ohio after a woman he had been holding captive escapes and calls 911. To investigators' surprise, Great admits to beating and sexually assaulting this Jane Doe. So she grabbed her, like, Where'd you grab her? Under her head. And then what? Now, Ashland Police Captain David Lay suspects that Great may also be involved in the disappearance of another woman, Elizabeth Griffith, who went missing a month earlier. Great initially says he doesn't know anything about it, but then he says this. Where's she at? She's uh, pretty. No more problems. She'll have to cry no more. Yet he clams up again. Then Detective Kim Majors brought in to question Great. I'm looking for Elizabeth's body. So you, she's dead? I believe she is. This is your moment. Is it my moment? And finally, he breaks. Where I came from. Yeah? There's somebody in there? Yeah. Who is it? Is it Elizabeth? Where is she in there? In the closet? According to Grade, on the day in question, he and Griffith played Yahtzee, and then later that night, she came over to the house where he had been staying. He claims Griffith was suicidal, and that he tried to strangle her as a way to playfully scare her, a scare he says turned deadly. Let's see exactly how much they really do want to die. You know what I mean? Something yeah. for a little fear on her, right? Yeah. She fought it. And then she like just started blowing up like you strangle her again is that how she died or is there another way that's the way she died. that's the way griffith's naked decomposed and bound corpse would be found under a pile of clothes in the closet of the house the horrors didn't end there are there any other girls in the house right now yeah She just led me on to the point of there was no stopping and it really irritated me. I don't know. Through everything else, I just stamped on her. What's her name? Stacy. Police now also discovered the dead body of 43-year-old Stacy Hicks, also known as Stacy Stanley, in the house as well. A mother and grandmother who great met outside a gas station. After helping to change her flat tire, authorities say he lured her back to the house where he sexually assaulted her and violently choked her to death. All right, did she try to fight you when you were strangling her? Yeah, I understand. I made her actually give me I was in that rage of like, all right. Great even agrees to demonstrate on a detective how he killed Elizabeth and Stacy. Like Elizabeth, right? It was kind of shocking, right? I was just joking. We were just joking. It was like how she wished she could kind of would die, you know what I mean? It was like, so, so I'll, I'll help you. I'll just go like this, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. push her forward and yeah. up at the same time. Right. And she kind of just like 
whack my hands and like started flipping out and stuff like that to the point where I had to just like grab her and I just would lean forward and just press. With strangling, you're looking at power and control, the ability to watch somebody up close, see what happens to their eyes and watch them take their last breath is indicative that he enjoys the control that he has over people. I'm still thinking about this, but what went wrong exactly with Stacy? Did she struggle? She did turn around. And then there's a time when I just squeezed her neck, put all my weight and me on her for a moment like that. Mm -hmm. And I just clenched, leaned back. Oh. Mm -hmm. How'd you know to stop? She went like this. As Great explains these details to law enforcement, you have to wonder, why is he saying all this? I think that once he had gotten caught, he knew that he couldn't kill anymore. And he enjoyed this control and manipulation that he had. And so this was one way that he could keep that going. You may think Sean Great has told investigators everything, but they're about to be shocked once again. And all the blood flowed down. Stay with us. I've shocked a lot of people. You have, you have. In 2016, Ohio police are investigating Sean Great. He was arrested after a woman he had kidnapped untied herself and called 911. Authorities discovered the dead bodies of two other women in the house where Great had been staying, Elizabeth Griffith and Stacy Stanley. As of now, Great has only been linked to three victims, but that's about to change. Four. Four what? Four women? Which one am I missing? Candace. Candace Cunningham, a 29-year-old woman that Great had been living with until ultimately killing her too. I grabbed her and that's when I choked her. She passed out. I was irritable. I had enough. I just finished her. Great would not only confess to her murder, but he even went on a ride along with police to lead them to her body, which he discarded next to a burned down house. And then I carried across the creek. Uh, she was pretty alive. Yeah. yeah. It seems like the last time she died was a lot heavier. Yeah, but is that normal? Great didn't stop there. There's a case from out in the county, uh, meaning that we found a girl. Rebecca Lacey. Yes, sir. I had a problem with her once. When 31-year-old Rebecca Lacey was found dead, the coroner originally ruled her death an overdose. However, Great says he was the one who killed her. Yeah, Rebecca was number two. Okay. It's pretty much self-defense on that one. Good. Just, she riled me out, just snapped like she just knew it on no. Finally, Great comes full circle and admits to the 2006 cold case murder of 23-year-old magazine saleswoman Dana Lowry, his very first known victim. Great picked up Dana after apparently being enraged that she failed to deliver subscriptions to his mother's house. He grabbed her like she just was meant to be choked out. That's the first thing I did when I went downstairs. Stabbed her in the neck. I didn't know what to do. Well, not only is he a serial killer, but he's a sexual sadist and a power and control type of serial killer. And what we see is that he escalates over time, probably because the high just isn't as good as, as it used to be. What motivated Great, though, to kill these women? You know, he has these reasons. One of them, he claimed stole money from him. Another woman, you know, was selling subscriptions and he said she was lying. The first two were more thieves. But, uh, I was just doing the world a favor. One of them, he said, was so depressed he was kind of giving her a chance to realize she wanted to be alive. And I'm not going to marry her. And I don't see no one else marrying her. She's going to be miserable all her life. There was this sense that like they had wronged him. 
wronged him in some way, that there was some justification in his mind that they kind of maybe deserved it in some way. My violence starts with lies start. Candace was probably I just tortured her for about three days. Coming up next, we learn exactly what happened in that dilapidated house. How was he joking? With both hands around my neck. Was he facing you? Uh -huh. Think all court shows are the same? We're talking about your father. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Think again. Judge Caprio rules with common sense. I was having contractions. I was rushing to the hospital. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand? Jail? <laughs> and compassion. I'm going to take the circumstances into consideration. The best court experience I've had. Clearly, Judge, he's been in a court before. Get caught in Providence. Hi, I'm Dan Abrams. In the exploding legal and true crime genre, Law & Crime is the only network that has it all. Good evening and welcome. This is a complicated case. Don't really jump to conclusions. Welcome to Prime Crime Tonight, another day of drama between both sides. From multiple live trials daily to original and compelling programming, the Law & Crime Network is everywhere, and we invite you inside the jury box. This is Law & Crime. Sleep. Brought these women into my life somehow or another for a reason. Yeah. But I the thinking I'm learning that it wasn't really God, it was the devil. By 2018, Sean Great was linked to the murders of five women, primarily from his own recorded confessions. In his first trial, he faced charges in connection with the deaths of Elizabeth Griffith and Stacey Stanley, as well as the kidnapping of a third woman who was able to escape from his clutches and call 911. It was her testimony that left everyone speechless. I remember him asking if I had an extra Bible. According to this victim, referred to as Jane Doe, Great had struck up a friendship with her and expressed that he had a shared interest in religion. You know, he always came off as a, a nice guy. Yet on the night of September 11, 2016, he convinced her to come back to the abandoned house he had been staying. Once there, things took a terrifying turn. So when he started pulling the Bible from my hands, I just looked up, like, curious, like, what are you doing? And um, that's when he said, that's when he said, you're not going anywhere. We started fighting. I was just doing everything, um, trying to kick punch, uh, but everything I did, he just did it so much harder. And did you continue to fight? Until he started choking me. And what did you do? I stopped. Why? Because I knew I couldn't get out of it. It gets even worse. You Several times. How would you In every way imaginable. She was able to give an accounting of what it was like being with him. It gives us a window into what it was like for the other victims. Although we've already heard the 911 call of her escape, now we were about to really understand what was going on in the background. I sat up and he was still asleep. I think I was working on trying to get unbound, but I was really frightened because the first night he was very alert. And then I sat back up and I reached over him trying to get the phone that was going off every five minutes. Remember that brief moment of panic on the call? I accidentally hit the taser and uh, and the crackling is loud and it woke him up and he sat up, he put his feet down on the, the floor. He was just really groggy though, he just looked at the floor like he was still asleep or out of it. He just sat like that, it seemed like 30 seconds and then he laid back down. 
That's how close she came to possibly never getting out of there alive. He is an experienced killer at this point. It's amazing that he didn't wake up and didn't stop her. But, you know, honestly, like, thank goodness. He was going to keep killing women. She saved so many lives. By the end of the trial, Great pled guilty to 15 of the 23 charges, and the jury convicted Great of the remaining counts. Now they had to determine whether to sentence him to death. He says that the thing that scares him the most is being put to death by the state. I really would like to stay alive through all this. Yes. Without... I imagine he tried to get a plea deal that would have taken capital punishment off the table and wasn't able to do that. One reads we the jury the duly panel unanimously find that the sentence of death should be imposed upon Sean and Great. This is dated May. The following year, while behind bars, Great pled guilty to the murders of Rebecca Lacey, Candace Cunningham, and Dana Lowry, with him receiving separate terms of life in prison. There's an interesting wrinkle, though. Great's been fighting his death sentence in the Ashland case. The Ohio Supreme Court has upheld his conviction and penalty. So the court found that although there were definitely instances where his counsel was ineffective, they didn't even raise basic objections, the court said. The amount of evidence against him was so overwhelming, he still would have been convicted. But at the time of this taping, the Supreme Court has allowed the appointment of a new attorney for Great. He doesn't want to get killed by the state. This helps delay that. Even if at the end of the day, after exhausting all the appeals, he's still convicted, we're talking about years of a delay. And at that point, Ohio may decide not to ever use the death penalty. Time will tell what happens to Sean Great, but here's something to remember when thinking about him ever getting a second chance. I would have loved to have been able to do a lot, but I know I wouldn't have been able to get away with it. When you think about what Sean Great did, he really is the epitome of evil. The only positive in all this is that he was caught before he could do even more harm because of the brave actions of one of his victims. And based on the Ohio Supreme Court's decision, Sean Great is hopefully going to stay where he belongs. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Leave us your comments on Twitter and Instagram with the hashtag Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us, and until next time, be safe.